Hello and welcome to this new edition of Global Voices of Accessible Travel. I'm Laurent, your host, uh, the co-owner of Tapus Travel. We are an accessible travel company based in San Francisco, California. Today, we are going to the Netherlands to speak with Ingrid Roloffs. Ingrid is a co-owner of the accessible travel company Vacanti and Zorg, or VZ for short, based in Emmen in the northeast of the country. Now, this interview is going to be a little bit different from the others we've done so far for two reasons. First of all, because VZ is not an incoming travel company to Holland. They specialize in outgoing destinations in Europe and worldwide for their Dutch guests. So we will be talking about the challenges of traveling outside of someone's comfort zone at home. Then it is also different because of the very specific focus uh, on the segment of accessibility travel, namely a more elderly population with fairly specific mobility limitations and needs. We'll talk about Vizi's traveling model of matching a traveler with a trained healthcare helper uh, using their own vehicles, their own equipment. Ingrid is herself a trained nurse and she brings her deep expertise of care to her travel philosophy. So let's go and meet Ingrid. Ingrid, good morning or good evening to you. It's great to see you. How are you? Hi Laurent, good to see you. It's evening in Holland, so yes, for me it it's good evening. It's evening a lot, but I see a lot of sunshine coming through your window. She must be still very bright. Yes, it still is. The sun is still shining uh, here in Holland. It's a very hot day today. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So, uh, for for people watching us all over the all over the world, really, would you like to take a minute to introduce yourself? Uh, say who you are, where you are, you know, what you're doing in in the regular life. Go yes, ahead. Please. <laughs> yes. Hi all. Uh, I'm Ingrid uh, from Holland. Uh, I'm living in Emmen. Most of you know Amsterdam, but uh, where I live is an hour and a half uh, from Amsterdam. I'm living near the German border. Uh, I'm a mother of four, a grandmother, um, and I started my own travel agency in 2008. Uh, we do a lot of um, accessible travel. Um, we do individuals like people who want to travel with families, uh, partners, uh, whatever. And we do more and more uh, group travel. Uh, we make a, a group, a, a, a travel plan, and uh, people can write in and travel together with all uh, foreigners. So that's uh, what we do. We uh, take a lot of uh, very heavily handicapped uh, people. We do a lot of care during our trips. I see. And that's where I'm busy with. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know, you, you are one of, uh, you know, you're very unique in, in, in the sense of what you do. You know, we, we had a chance to communicate uh, in past years about the, the type of travel you do and then the needs of your travelers. And I think it's 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 really impressive that you're able to take people that would not have the, the opportunity to travel on their own uh, unless there were people like, like your organization to uh, to assist. And you know, it, it leads me right away to the question. You know, we, we are now in this uh, pandemic. Um, yeah. How does that affect your business? Is anybody traveling nowadays uh, uh, no. from your clientele? No, uh, traveling is totally quiet. It's uh, nothing. Uh, all trips from this uh, this last few months are cancelled. Uh, we uh, we cancelled uh, people. Uh, we rebooked them to other trips. Uh, no bookings are coming. So um, now the first trip we uh, we hope to uh, to make uh, happen is uh, inside Holland uh, in July. Yes, that that's interesting. And you know, I, I, when I talk to our colleagues uh, all across the globe, we all are more or less in the same situations. You know, yeah. where where basically we are now the standstill. Uh, part of it is because of um, legal. Uh, travel bans and limitation, but, but a lot of that also comes from the feeling of the travelers, whether or not it's even safe to uh, to travel nowadays. So we, we, we hear that a lot. Can, can you speak to that when you speak to your to your travelers? What when they asking you, Ingrid? You know, when do you feel it's going to be safe, or how should we look at safety for our travels? What what do you say to them? Yeah. Uh, well, the government uh, made some uh, some lines uh, that we have to follow, and um, 
uh, people are doing that and questions about traveling to to uh, outside outside the Netherlands uh, uh, we didn't have them yet uh, but uh, today I got a question from a, a, a guest who is traveling with us inside Holland in July and they said hey how are you going to do that uh, how is my safety uh, and we made a list of uh, Corona on holiday and uh, made all the the um, uh, protocol and uh, yeah, and that's it, that's enough for people. Then they okay. know they can trust it. That that's a very interesting point. You know, um, I, you, if you follow what's going on in other parts of the world, you know, some some countries have come up uh, from the authorities, the government. Uh, angle with you know very strong, very clear guidelines. Some countries basically in the business community, the, the providers that are kind of stepping into the, the, the space and providing those guidelines. For example, in the US, um, there you know we have the CDC. The US is you know 50 different states and each state is a bit different. But uh, the hotel industry, the airline industries, they were among the first one already, you know, maybe three or four weeks ago to come out with very clear, very precise, very detailed protocols about flying and hotels and the sanitation and so forth. Do you have something like that happening in, in Holland? Yeah, uh, well, uh, at this moment, Holland is in a self-called uh, intelligent lockdown. Um, from yesterday, uh, cafes and restaurants uh, can open a little bit, um, but uh, we are not allowed to travel to the uh, to the uh, other countries or or uh, whatever. Um, about the uh, airlines, so we fly a lot with KLM and Transavia, and they have the same uh, measurements. Uh, you have to wear a face mask. Uh, from start of flying and also in the airport, but that's not their uh, business. Um, they want you to self-check in, so they don't have to take your boarding pass and things. They do more cleaning and you can check in uh, your hand luggage for free. So I we see. can board uh, quickly and um, that's the measurements they are now uh, handling. I see. You know, on, on, a, on a small segue about airline uh, travel, um, something again we, we hear from other colleagues. Um, in Europe, you have a pretty well developed railway system, trains. Yeah. Um, do you see that as a good alternative to our airline travel? Um, yes and no. Uh, the the railway uh, is good, but um, it's also a long travel. Uh, let's say yeah. when I want to travel from uh, from Amsterdam to Berlin, uh, it's about six hours. Wow. It's good. It's good to do with a train. Fine. If we go to Paris, same same time. But if I want to go to Madrid or Vienna. Uh, then uh, the train ride is already uh, something like 24 hours. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, so yeah. I I don't think people want to sit 24 hours in the train. Then they no. take the, the airplane. Yes, okay, so that's interesting. So, you know, I, I, I'm guessing, you know, just taking those two examples, I'm guessing that uh, as we move forward with more and more um, countries opening within the continental Europe, um, you may face a situation where some travelers, you know, they will be okay with that six hours, but above six hours, then they will look to uh, to fly. Yeah. And I and I understand that. I mean, flying for a person with a disability, flying for a wheelchair user has never been a lot of fun. You know, it's it's uh, it's usually not a good experience. So we compare to that to six hours in train. When you can uh, start and and arrive to your destination from transition within the city, now, there is no pro and cons. But obviously, yeah. if you have to go to to Madrid or other uh, other far destination, flying then becomes the uh, the default. I, I, I yeah. understand that. Tell me, in in uh, in a whole, I know that the Dutch people are are wonderful. On, on a parenthesis, I will say to my uh, my all the people watching us, you know, I have a I have a lot of affinity to uh, to Holland because uh, my wife 
my wife spent many years in Holland, uh, but most of you know half of her family are in Amsterdam and uh, and no. uh, and other places. So, so we you know we we know the country and I love the country. And I have to tell you this. It's one of the countries where people you, you talked about intelligent lockdown, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's a great it's a great expression because uh, there is some intelligence among the the Dutch people in the way they they, they face crisis and and the way they behave in in uh, in extreme situation. Um, but just to make the point for other people, you know, uh, social distances, uh, wearing a mask in public, uh, uh, sanitation in uh, public places. Is that enforced? Are, are people really uh, adhering to those standards? Um, you mean if if uh, people uh, follow the uh, the standards? Yeah, yeah, yeah most uh, most they do. And now I'm um, uh, kind of ashamed because there was a big big demonstration yesterday in Amsterdam. And uh, there's a lot of uh, whoa. <laughs> yeah. They don't agree and. Um, and I understand because um, the the government uh, want uh, all of us to stay uh, the uh, in the social distance, uh, one and a half meters. And if you can't, you have to wear a face mask. And uh, yesterday in Amsterdam, uh, both uh, wasn't happen. Right. So, yeah, but mostly, um, I guess they do. Right. No, you know, th th this is not. Um... This is not a point I'm, I'm raising lightly, and again, it's because a lot of stuff we're hearing here from our uh, network of uh, guests and, and travelers. Here in the U.S., you know, if, if you follow the news, you're going to see that it's all over the place. Some, yeah, I know. Some, some cities, some states, some counties are very uh, strict or really encourage people to follow those protocols. And some states are completely oblivious, you know, go to the beach, you know, go to parties, go to the bar, it's okay. So... Yeah. For travelers here within the U.S., when we start, we you know, we're starting to open the country again. But I have travelers from California that are telling me, "Is it safe for me to travel to New York, or is it safe for me to travel to Nevada, or Arizona, the the states next door to us?" And I have to tell them, you know, let me look at the statistics. You know, let me look at the uh, the spread of the virus, but also let me look at how those protocols are enforced because you don't want to endanger yourself going to a place where people are not going to respect those protocols even if you do so that's you're raising a very good point about holland which i think it will be a, a comforting and probably a positive point when people are going to look at coming to europe they will be looking at countries that have a good history and a good uh, uh, set of behavior of their population in terms of enforcing those uh, those protocols. Um, so you know, Europe is opening uh, slowly but surely. Um, mm. yeah, there are, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And and you know, it's. Uh, I, I was talking to a number of our colleagues overseas. So I, I'll give you two examples because it, it it actually touches directly into what you do. Uh, I was talking to a colleague in, in Denmark just a few days ago about the situation in Scandinavia overall and, and the way and the reopening of, of uh, tourism. And they, they are looking and been looking now for a while about creating this uh, travel bubble uh, you know, within a few countries where it is going to be freer, freer to, to, uh, to travel within those countries and more difficult to travel to other places or even people coming in from other places. Um, is there something like that happening? Uh, you know, countries around Holland, you know, Germany and France and so forth. Are, are you looking at or is Holland looking at creating some travel bubble where it's safer yeah. to travel within your neighbors? Yeah. Yeah, uh, until now um, the the travel advice is uh, orange, um, so we can't um, uh, travel to Germany or Belgium or France uh, just like that. It's not what they want. Um, and I just heard that tomorrow they will come with an, uh, an a conference, a, a press conference, that um, uh, they will uh, make the travel advice uh, yellow for some countries in Europe. We don't know what countries yet. And uh, if people want to come from uh, America, uh, uh, Asia, whatever, uh, then they still have to be uh, two weeks in quarantine when they come in, uh, in Holland. 
So don't travel to Holland yet. <laughs> well, and, and unless you have the uh, and a place and, and the luxury maybe of staying two weeks somewhere before you actually start your vacation. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, that's, you know, it, it, uh, unless and until we have a treatment and a vaccine, uh, it, it's going to take a while before we go back to, uh, to something like that. And, you know, we always say here, I mean, up until a few weeks ago, we're saying, okay, when things go back to normal, you know, yeah. meaning when we have the vaccine, when we have the, tra the treatment, then it'll be okay. Then we're going to go back to the way it was before. But I got to tell you again, from my own perception and discussion that I have, there will be a new normal. Yeah. We, we will know, we will never or not for a while go back to the way it was before. And and the new normal may, may be that uh, the style of traveling, um, for a person in a uh, wheelchair user, certainly the, the things that you will consider to be your vacation will be different, might be different. And it's just not just a question of social distances. I'm, I'm guessing that even when we are going to that new normal, even places that are so popular and very busy, uh, we limit the number of people that can visit at any given, maybe the Rembrandt Museum or, you know, or any of the famous places in Holland or across Europe. Um, Maybe they will limit the number of people that can enter the building or what have you. That that's kind of a new normal. Um, yeah. Is there? Do you feel that something like that going to happen in Europe? The destinations that you go to? Um, well, on on long uh, term, and I I don't I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, I also think there's going to be a new normal, but in what way? Uh, maybe only in our minds there's going to be a new normal. If, if we uh, if we uh, uh, we m m meet someone, we don't shake hands, um, right. but we just say hey, hello, or uh, something like that. Um, at this moment uh, in Holland, um, it's a it's a small opening in the in the uh, in the lockdown. Um, now a museum uh, can um, uh, people can go to the museum again. But they have to buy a ticket uh, in front, and there can be uh, only a few people uh, at the same time uh, go into that museum or into right. that uh, the Efteling or into a restaurant or uh, uh, until the first of July. Um, the groups that can be together in a restaurant um, uh, can only be thirty people. And from uh, the uh, 1st of July, they want to make the groups bigger to 100 uh, people right, together. Right. So I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> no, I mean, no, nobody knows. Nobody knows. But, you know, you, you and your company, you travel. I don't know how many destinations you have, but literally when, you know, I would direct people to your website, they can look at all the destinations you go to. I mean, you, you truly are spreading all across uh, Europe. Um, yeah. What are the destinations that that you think uh, will will be the first one to uh, to be available to your travelers? You know, in the foreseen future, the end of the year, maybe on the next series of all the destinations, which one do you feel are going to be the one that you're going to serve again? Spain. Yeah, Spain. I did. I did not see that. I did not expect that no? answer. Well, no, that's interesting. That, that tell yeah. me more. Yeah. Well, um, Holland is uh, today is a very hot day, but um, uh, usually we don't have many uh, warm days in Holland. We have more rain, rainy days. It's not like like uh, England, but more. And um, people and when they go on a holiday, uh, they want to go to the sun. Uh, and Spain, uh, Spain is good in accessibility. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, Spain, uh, from my point of view, uh, will be the first country uh, that people are asking for. As a matter of fact, I do have a trip to uh, to Italy, uh, Toscania. Mm -hmm. uh, no one asked for it. <laughs> and I do have trips to Spain and they're already fully booked. That is so interesting. I had no idea because no. Again, you know, the perception that we have of Spain. I mean, I, I love Spain and my family's from Spain originally. So, you know, I love the country. I visit the country all the time. But, um, you know, it's a country that has been the news as a country that was hit really, really hard, where 
uh, the virus has spread. I mean, uh, terrible stories. And and the per the perception is that, well, Spain may not be safe to travel to for a while. So I, it's really interesting to see that your on the ground first hand understanding is that yeah, yeah, this is something that is going to happen. That's yeah. that's great. That's great news yeah. and news yeah. for but your travelers. Yeah. Yeah, but not all of Spain is hit very hard. Uh, right. You look at the Canarian, they have very less uh, infections. Of course, being an island and having the ability yeah. to control an environment. Very, yeah. very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, so uh, almost on the same issue, you know, looking at the, 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 the very popular uh, destinations for travel from Northern Europe, the cruises were a big thing. Um, yeah. What's your what's your view of uh, cruises? Do you, do you feel um, are you getting any requests from your travelers for that? Um, no, I'm not very good in cruises. Um, it's uh, also very difficult uh, for me to book cruises because uh, the allotment is is uh, poor. And uh, if I want to to book a group on a cruise, I have to have uh, 16 guests. Right. And uh, so. Uh, actually, I, I almost never sell a cruise. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I, again, you know, just uh, as a segue for uh, from uh, the style of travel, if you will, uh, in Europe. Um, I, you said earlier, you know, group travel, uh, individual travelers across accommodate families, a small group. Do you, are you seeing a shift or are you seeing a, a demand maybe for uh, individual travelers or families wishing to travel together rather than joining a group? Is that something that is on the map for you? Uh, yes, we do have um, and we do organize um, uh, the the people that are joining our groups uh, are uh, are not able to travel on their own. Right. Uh, they're uh, too old or they need too much care or uh, something like that. And uh, the care system in America is different from Holland. Uh, from what I see in the in the groups uh, is that it's very common to take your own care um, in America. Uh, yeah. In Holland, in Holland, almost oh, yeah, almost never. So um, if people need a lot of care, uh, nursing care or personal care, uh, then they book a group trip like like mine or or some other supplier, and uh, we take nurses and uh, and uh, carers and uh, they work as a volunteer mm -hmm. and uh, they they uh, they make sure our guests get uh, the the necessary uh, uh, care um, yeah nursing care yeah of course of course so uh, how, how do you handle the situation when you when you go to uh, you know rush hour or the far away uh, destinations um, are you able to organize the, the whole uh, system coming out of Holland with your travelers or are you yeah. are you sourcing yeah. the care on site? No, no, we always take our carers and our nurses uh, from Holland. Uh -huh. They uh, they are connected to my uh, agency um, and they, they work for free um, and the guest uh, is paying their trip. That is uh, that's the, the connection they make. Are, are you also able to offer uh, spots on, on in your groups that you organize for people that are not Dutch citizens uh, from other European yeah, sure. countries? Okay. No problem. Yeah, sure. Of course. Okay. It's, yeah. it's good to know. That's something I wasn't completely aware of that, you know, we sometimes have requests for our guests, uh, American Canadian travelers uh, mm -hmm. that don't necessarily want to travel independently. And it's always been an issue for me to find who on site could actually take care of them as part of the group. Yeah. Some people just love yeah. traveling with group and the dynamics of, uh, of a group yeah. travel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we can we can also um, uh, if, if, if there is a, a group of people, small groups, we also work with small groups, uh, a maximum of 10 guests. That's of enough. Course. And um, if there's a group of people that say, hey, we want to go to Holland or Germany, um, they fly to uh, Schiphol yes. and, and we can we can uh, pick them up and uh, make sure there are some carers and, uh, and lead them uh, through their trip. That, that's great. That's that's good to know. 
that's good to know. Uh, Ingrid, it's it's a pleasure talking to you. You know, I I, I could keep on talking to you now for hours, um, but I don't know. It's it's evening your time, and I, I don't want to take too much time of your uh, family time. Uh, before we say goodbye, is there any any words of wisdom that you wanna you wanna give to travelers that are watching these interviews? Well, there's only one thing I want to say: stay safe. Uh, look where you're traveling. Come to Holland. It's a beautiful country. It is indeed. Uh, December is not the be not the very best month of traveling, but if you come from uh, May to October, it's great in Holland. I love to welcome you. <laughs> Excellent, and we'll make sure that happens. Ingrid, thank you so much again, and hopefully we can reconnect maybe in a couple of weeks and and um, you know, keep our finger on the pulse of what is going on in okay. Europe. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me in your interview. My pleasure. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.